Hey, what's happening everyone? Pragmatic Addict here. Strap in guys, we've got a series review. So I've been really curious about this one and I, I have a few things to note before I get into the review. So I've only seen Haunting a Hill House and Haunting a Blind Manor. Haunting a Hill House, obviously, because that was just lightning in a fucking bottle. I saw Haunting of Bly Manor, obviously, because of how much I liked Haunting a Hill House, but it did have me a little bit disappointed, and not only, like, because of the disappointment of Haunting of Bly Manor, but once he started doing, doing like, Midnight Mass and Midnight Club and, like, derived away from the haunting, I just wasn't really, like, that interested, but this one... I've been really curious about this one because, one, it actually got, like, some of the best reviews out of, like, the five series that he's done up to this point, and also, it just, it go it felt like it was going back to his roots, you know, not necessarily being, like, the haunting formula, but this is based off of an Edgar Allan Poe series, so just that with the reviews, and with this being Mike Flanagan's final like series on Netflix before he departs to Amazon. I was really curious about where this one would land with the five. I also do want to note really quickly that I have not read too, too much of Edgar Allan Poe's work. Uh, I know enough to notice that the episodes had titles based off of like different Edgar Allan Poe stories. So I don't know if like each episode in their titles had nods to those specific stories. I am just watching this and reviewing this based off of the horror series that I just watched. But with all that being said, guys, I did just binge this series, so let's talk about The Fall of the House of Usher. So, the synopsis for the series reads, The CEO of a corrupt pharmaceutical company faces his questionable past when his children start dying in mysterious and brutal ways. So the first grab, I guess I'll call it, like, out of the series was obviously from the first episode, was the gothic horror. How well this looked. I mean, the directing, the color palette, the tone, and for its source material being based on an Edgar Allan Poe series and being seemingly like set in modern day, it just flowed so well. And it was just such an interesting thing to see, like an adaptation from someone like Edgar Allan Poe being spun into this modern day era. It was just interesting to see. Also the setting and pacing with the two characters in the first episode because this does sort of like serves as ah, serve as like an introduction of sorts we have a character named Roderick who is the last living member of this Usher family and he's sitting alongside a an uh, investigator named August and how the series like basically plays out is that with each episode that we're watching it's all stories that this guy Roderick is telling this investigator and he's telling him these stories in this really rundown like house from the it 2017 movie looking place and what i liked about it is that in some ways it does go back to the roots and the wants that we kind of wanted for the past four series after haunting a house which is that this guy that's telling us all these stories roderick he's telling us these stories in modern day obviously and all the stories that he's telling are about the deaths of the family members of his family. You know, the, the Usher family. And he's essentially just haunted by all these, by, all, by his family's death and everything. So when I say that it goes back to the roots of Haunting a Hell House, that's what I really liked is that the, initially this started off being like a series where I was like, okay, obviously, like after the first episode or so, I was like, okay, obviously the flashback sequences that Mike Flanagan always does in his series. Those are obviously going to be like where the real meat of the episodes comes in. But it also did that thing like Haunting a Hill House where whenever it did kind of slow down and cut to like modern day, you weren't like bored at all because you understand this character, Roderick. You understand all the guilt he has, all the trauma and everything. And again, just though like it, it feels necessary that he would be haunted by his family's deaths like Haunting of Hill House. And I guess what I can say, and this is just like the first episode, is that I felt like I was feeling how I was supposed to feel while watching this. Also, what I really liked about the story and everything, how it's told, is that there are a lot of fucking characters in this series, and as far as like their flashbacks and everything, it can be a little overstimulating, especially at first. There's so much eccentricity, and there's so much energy, and there's so much just life and different themes, and genres that it can be again like a little bit 
overstimulating when you're watching you're just like okay and especially with the background of these characters this is that like rich privileged background and i was like okay right off the bat like initially i don't like any of these characters i don't like the background it's too much i hope it's not that case where only the first episode is an absolute fucking banger and then the rest of the series just doesn't land as well but what i will say is that there are so many characters <laughs> that with, with like within the flashbacks that the kind of like the flashbacks it kind of feels like how you would expect an anthology like a good anthology series to play out each flashback is horrifying and holds its own with whether it be its directing or its characters or its performances or its horror that in all honesty they kind of just made like well as like their own stories also another thing i want to know which is kind of like different is that so like obviously with each episode we see more flashbacks and like generally like you've seen with other past flanagan series when the, ep the episodes usually end with a certain flashback that kind of ends with a bang and what i will say about this one specifically this series is that the flashbacks end with such good climax that you feel like okay i've seen all i need to see about this character for now let's go to the next one let's get more of this background let's see how this all comes full circle and that was really impressive again especially initially with just how many characters there were how kind of put off i admittedly was by the show and like a little bit worried i was the one thing i did like that haunting of hill house did that this series like just not as well is that with the flashbacks in the series it does feel like modern data especially the first couple episodes i was really confused i was like is this supposed to be a flashback or is this modern day because usually when you think of flashbacks in like a flanagan series and especially being an adaptation of edgar Allan poe i'm like i don't know where this stands and what i will say is that in a lot of these flashbacks especially within like the, i would say like the second or third episodes uh more so like the second i would say that this is just a case where the show just has kind of like a rough start because a lot of these flashbacks because of the kind of family we're watching because of the kind of characters that they are like how i said that there's a lot of eccentricity a lot of energy it kind of departs away from the horror to a degree where you forget the kind of show you're watching where it's not really what you want it's not really what you're expecting but you again do kind of give it like a pass to an extent because all the most important things the horror the characters the like pacing and everything and another thing i want to talk about with this series is the exper experimentalism which we'll get into but all the most important stuff does land the best out of the series. And one last thing before I get into like the more experimental stuff of the series is that another like issue with me, again, this is just within like the first couple episodes is that the flaws that I had with like the series, like the issues I had, those were like most of the screen time. A lot of it is just seeing the flashback of this privileged family, all these unlikable characters, a lot of this like genre and atmospheric stuff that isn't really what you'd expect out of like a Mike Flanagan series based off of an Edgar Allan Poe story and I will admit that kind of did shoot me down just a bit at this point but for what it is I will say this that I did respect is that during those moments Mike Flanagan also brings you back in like before it's been too much time he reminds you like what the overall goal is and like grand scheme of what the actual story is but I will say this though while I didn't know exactly how I felt during those moments there is also like a lot of times away from those moments and away from the horror where Mike Flanagan just tackles a lot and he just does a lot of new stuff where this really does feel like the latest and newest and most work he's gotten out of his career. It just feels like what Mike Flanagan would be working with right now. And especially as the series went on, like especially within the first couple episodes, Mike Flanagan just goes for everything. This series is fucked up it's horrifying it's seductive it's toxic it's just dark and it's humor and it's subject material also like within its genre bending it just started to feel like a fucked up trip and it was just hard to believe that everything that we were seeing was all part of the same show it's an interesting series really the first episode is maybe flawless as a first like episode to a horror series the second episode is just a hodgepodge of all genres, all themes, experimentalism, and it's just hard to believe that it's all one episode. Episode three was an interesting one for me because it was at that, it was like by that point where I just kind of accepted that this show is gonna do whatever the fuck it wanted. And while there is like horror to an extent in each episode, I wouldn't necessarily say that like episode three is the most 
horrific episode, but it's got the most shock horror. Again, this is a very experimental series. Mike Flanagan does a lot, and while each episode does have its own variety of horror to it, again, it was just at that point where I really kind of wasn't so sure it was gonna stand out, and the horror just wasn't as present as I wanted it to be. And again, it's just that case where the series just throws a lot at you at once, especially like initially that it doesn't quite deliver what you may want or what you may expect. I mean, there's a lot of genres, a lot of characters. There's a lot of like experimental based stuff that you wouldn't expect out of a series like this or like haven't seen yet from Mike Flanagan. Like I would go as far as to say that like episode three is when it's at its peak. That's when it really starts to feel like a horror series from there on out. In saying this though, it is still a very experimental series. I mean, there are times where there are episodes that are just flat out dramas. But at this point, it wasn't really a bother because we've seen so much story at this point that, and like just the darkness and drama and horror surrounding the ushers alone, just that story, that is always consistent regardless. So again, you just kind of forgive the things that don't land as strong as you want them to or like as other as aspects. It's just an interesting series that offers so much endlessly with genres and character and themes that it may not be necessarily what you want or expect, but for what the show is and all that it does, it is consistent with that. But another thing I want to know is just how well the fucking script is written. There are a lot of just weighty and lengthy lines that really make great performances out of these actors and actresses. And I want to say really quickly, I watch subtitles with everything, but for this specific series, watching this with subtitles, just reading all the bullshit and all the absurdity and all the, like, gifted writing, honestly, like, all that was actually being said, just reading it as it was said, I'm just like, wow. And what's even more interesting about this is that, like, these weighty lines and everything, they're usually within, like, the dark humor genre or the really hard to swallow like drama area and that's another thing that i want to note about this series which yes you guess it is like a little bit more experimental is that the humor in this series it works really well with even like the horror as well as like the chemistry within all of the characters with each other and i just couldn't believe how well it worked and how much fun it was in all the ways it's incorporated another thing i want to note is just like how much each character has to work with and how much they give. Obviously, there are a lot of characters. Obviously, this is like an eight, roughly eight hour, like, series. Each character, even though, like, initially, I really wasn't vibing with a whole lot of them, as, like, just performances, each character has so much to give. Each one is so unique and is such a standout in their own way. Like, for example, one of the standout characters, uh, to me, I believe the actor's name is Raul Kohli, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Initially, he was like the most unlikable character to me. I just didn't want to watch him. I didn't like him at all. And he's written as a, you know, pretty unlikable character. But as a character and as a character within this series, like within all that this series has to it, he just gets so much to work with. The comedy, the horror, showing off his acting chops. And his character arc was just one of the most funnest to watch. It is one of the most darkest, it's one of the most memorable, most humorous, and it was just one of those things where I was like so surprised that like once this, again, series like got to its peak, it really just hit. But what I do want to note is that while every character like has a good performance and everything, offers enough and has enough to work with, Bruce Greenwood's character, the older man who's just being haunted, he seemingly has like the least to do with to an extent in the series like among all the other characters but whenever he was on screen I was always strapped in I was always anxious I was always engaged because that is where like the most horror comes in obviously he's the one that's haunted he's like the last member like surviving member of the family he's recalling all these things and just for what his character does he sells it so fucking well i'm also going to talk about mark hamill obviously when i heard that mark hamill was going to be attached to this project i was a little bit nervous that he was just going to be like a cameo was just going to be there for like more or less like promotional aspect but while he is more of a side character don't get that twisted he has a lot to work with he is in every single episode he offers a lot to the series he's consistently just a blast to watch and honestly maybe the most unique character out of the series now carla gagino 
this one I really wanted to talk about. So what I was really interested in, surprised, but also like very happy that she got something like this to work with this far into her career, is that she plays multiple roles. Like even like up to like the third episode, I was like, have I seen this woman in like six different wardrobes already? She comes off as like death in a sort of way. She has like involvement to each death and like ties to each family member and seeing her tackle so much just again like this far into her career it's just something where you're just watching it and you're just respecting it i can say this a million times there is so much that mike flanagan does in this series that he has never done before that you just know he's just pushing his limits and it comes off so impressively especially with how much there is to this series and how like a little bit rougher on the edges it may have started at the beginning I think I've said overall what I want to say about this series. There was a lot to talk about. There's a lot to get into. There's so much to unpack. Once this series hits its peak, you really do feel it. And I'm going to give Fall of the House of Usher a positive review. Definitely check this one out, guys. This is a really interesting series. I cannot say how it's going to land for everybody. I can't even begin, even with everything that I've just said, to tell you what to expect. And it's just one of those series that it does so many new things and it does so much variety in every aspect that you just got to watch this and just take it all in yourself. But yes, guys, that is going to do it for my review of the series Fall of the House of Usher. Definitely let me know of what you guys thought about this series in the comments below. Again, I have, I have not like read the like works of Edgar Allan Poe too much. So if there's anything that you guys would love to like offer as far as like little like knowledge and everything to me, I would love that. But yes, guys, that is going to do it for this review. I will see you guys very soon in the next video. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're all having a great day. Take care.